Welcome and good afternoon, everyone. Please remain standing as you are able. My name is Deborah Buzzard. I am the interim president and vice chancellor of the University of British Columbia, and it is a great pleasure to be with you all here today. Let me begin by expressing my gratitude to the Silks Okanagan people on whose traditional, ancestral, and unceded territory we are gathered today. Please join me in reflecting on the importance of understanding the histories that brought us to this land and to seek to understand our place within that history. At this time, I invite Amber Cardenas and Whitney Cardenas, members of the Okanagan Nation, to sing the Okanagan song. Why Haskell Halt Yayat, Isquis Amber Cardenas, Iskika Whitney Cardenas, Kuchtols and Pinkton, Tally Kalimtapanaskal Halt. Hello, good day to all of you. Um, my sister and I are from a place in our language called St. Pinkston, um, which today is commonly referred to as Penticton. The song we're going to sing today is in our language. And what this song says is, Athli, because or the reason being. Athli kus wibi numta, the reason we are beautiful. Um, Athli kus ukanagkane, because we are Okanagan. And Athli achai timhulau, because this land, our land, is beautiful. And the reference of beauty to this song doesn't refer to outer physical beauty. Um, it refers to the relationship and the connection we have with this land. Um, and in our creation stories, it's this land that has given to us. And all of us as human beings are so dependent on it. Um, because without the water, without uh, the plants and the animals and what nourishes us, we would cease to exist as human beings. But congratulations. Uh, I'm so excited that uh, <laughs> this is the last ceremony and the grad class of 2023 of the University of British Columbia and they are doing such amazing work and I'm glad and um, so congratulations to the alumni. Be proud that you studied here, lived here, and if you continue to live here and work here uh, that, and call this place home, reflect on the beauty of this land. Once again, congratulations.
a big, a big thank you to the Cardina sisters for that wonderful performance. We pause now to give a moment to give thanks, spiritual and temporal, on this important occasion. We acknowledge and pay tribute to those who are unable to join us today, remembering especially those who've made an impact on our lives and community, and appreciating those who have contributed to supporting our graduates. We pause to appreciate the blessings we share, to acknowledge these proud students, their achievements, their families and friends. And now we invite you to remain standing as you are able while the band performs O Canada. The words are shown on the screen should you wish to sing along. Please be seated. Chancellor Point, Dr. Dick Fletcher, honored guests, members of the Board of Governors, the Senate, faculty, staff, alumni, and most especially you, the graduates, your families and friends, and everyone joining us here at the Okanagan campus or via the online webcast. Welcome to the University of British Columbia's graduation ceremony. It is truly an honor to be with you today to celebrate your achievements. This is a time of joy, a time to celebrate, a time to come together as a community, whether in person or online, all of us, your professors, your family and friends, everyone gathered here today is here because we are proud of you. Your graduation is a tremendous achievement. It's the culmination of years of hard work, your persistence, your ability to take in and embrace information and new ideas, and as I look out at you, our graduating class, I am struck by your collective power to be a force for positive change in your careers, in your communities, and for the world. And yes, there is much work for you to do. Locally and globally, we see challenges and uncertainties and at the same time, the, emerging, the emergence of exciting new opportunities and technologies which are set to reshape our world in ways that we cannot begin to imagine. And this is where you come in. You're a very special graduating class this year. You are 
the fourth from 2020, 21, 22, and now 2023, your education was upended by a global pandemic. And you coped. Indeed, it's clear that you did much more than cope. You adapted, you thrived, and the evidence is that you are here today. That experience and the education that UBC has given you give me absolutely every confidence that your education and experiences position you all for the brightest of futures. You will make a better future. So on behalf of the University of British Columbia, Congratulations to everyone. Tuum est. I wish you every success. Well done, class of 2023. Thank you, Madam President. My name is Leslie Cormack, and I'm the principal of UBC's Okanagan campus and deputy vice chancellor of the UBC system. So first off, congratulations. You made it. Today is a big day. This is important. You can feel it. I've attended many graduation ceremonies in my academic career as a graduating student, as a professor, as a supervisor, as an academic leader, and arguably the most memorable of all as a parent of a graduating student. You might think with all of that, this, this would get old, that the, the ritual would seem overdone, but that has not been my experience. And this is why this ritual ties all of you to a millennia of scholars who have walked this way before. This is the moment where you all become part of that great body of scholars who has and will change the world for better. Standing up here, looking out at all of you, I can, I can feel the excitement, the, the anticipation, the joy, the relief. Uh, I can see your professors, your, your friends, your family, and loved ones sharing this moment with you, and maybe the relief. Uh, and I know that many of you have loved ones around the world who are thinking of you at this moment. The pride is palpable and so well-deserved. Today is the culmination of years of assignments, exams, late nights, and occasional light bulb moments of inspiration. It takes resilience, dedication, and perseverance to reach this moment. And as President Buzzard, Buzzard said, this has never been truer than for you, our students, who on top of the regular stresses of being a student also had to juggle the sudden online switch to, to online learning in 2020, a year of remote learning, gradual return to campus, hybrid uh, to learning. It's been quite the journey. And you're, sorry. You were presented with challenges that we wouldn't even have, have predicted or imagined five years ago. And it hasn't been easy. I, I really do want to acknowledge that. I know this has been a, a challenging few years. And yet, you're here. You did it. All the challenges that you have faced now melt away in this moment of pride and joy. You should be beyond proud of yourselves. We are all proud of you. Today is a day of possibility. You've spent the last years preparing yourselves, not for this moment, but for what comes after this moment, of all the rest to come. This is a moment where you can take stock, where you can appreciate where you've been and look forward to where you go. So everything is now possible. And your time at UBC has equipped you to excel in your future career and to be the engaged, committed, global citizens we all need you to be in this constantly changing world. When you think of all the students here in the room who will go out into the world and bring with them positive change, it is awe-inspiring. And frankly, it's the reason UBC is here as an institution, to equip and empower you that, that then can drive the change in the world. You have now officially joined the ranks of UBC alumni. You are admitted into this great congregation of scholars in demonstration of all that you have learned and achieved. Congratulations. But you know, 
as you go out into the world, this great uh, uh, privilege that you have comes with responsibility. You are all responsible to think rationally, to look for evidence, to find creative and innovative solutions, and to write injustices. Never forget that responsibility. When you leave here today, please know that UBC is here to support you as you now join the ranks of UBC's distinguished alumni. This illustrious neighbor network includes prime ministers, entrepreneurs, astronauts, artists, world changers, and now each of you. I encourage you to keep in touch throughout your career and know that we look forward to welcoming you back. Graduation from university is a remarkable achievement, and I really do want to offer my special congratulations to this graduating class for enduring and indeed thriving in a challenging environment. As you revel in this moment of well-earned celebration, remember, our future is in your hands. And looking out at all of you, I have pretty high hopes for that future. On behalf of the University of British Columbia and the entire Okanagan campus, Congratulations, class of 2023. I'm pleased at this time to call upon Erica Pinio, member of the graduating class, to make remarks. Thank you, Dr. Cormack. And thank you, Chancellor Point, President Buzzard, honored guests, friends, and families for being here to celebrate this milestone with us today. As we gather here, we not only celebrate the culmination of our hard work, but we also reflect on the incredible journey we have been on over the past four, probably five, maybe even six years of our lives. It feels like just yesterday when we began this adventure, eager to explore and discover what it means to be an engineer. In our first year design class, Dr. Ray Tahiri asked us why we wanted to be engineers. I remember that you answered things like, I want to be an engineer to help people. I want to protect the environment. And my personal favorite, it's the only job where you can be an artist and a scientist. As we turn the page into the next chapter of our lives, take a moment to remind yourself why you want to be an engineer and reflect on how the tools you have learned today will help you build a better tomorrow. I hope you liked that metaphor. The truth is I'm not an inspirational speaker. Like many of my classmates, I have spent two thirds of every year in school for as long as I can remember. That said, I have been storytelling and offering my unsolicited advice for quite a few years now. So at the ripe age of 23.0, I would like to share with you 10 lessons that I have learned during my time here. There is a lot to cover, so in the wise words of Dr. Mehran Shirazi, please pay attention. <laughs> Number one, anything real is first fiction, a story in your head of what it could be. Therefore, imagination is one of the most important skills and thankfully something that you can get better at. Don't be afraid to be a dreamer. Two, don't seek happiness. They say happiness is like a butterfly. The more you chase it, the more it will elude you. Be present and focus on making other people happy and you will find that happiness will often arrive as a side effect. Number three, always say hello first. When you are networking or trying to make friends or asking someone out for plans, always say hello first. Applying this rule will push you to overcome your fears of rejection, which can open your life up to so many interesting people and experiences. Four, never underestimate the power of a good walk. Chegg was right. If you can't figure something out or if you need a new perspective, just take it step by step. Five, be both a student and a teacher. Seek first to understand, then be understood. Everyone you meet knows something you don't, and if you genuinely try to understand them, you might just learn something. Six, remember that you cannot pour from an empty cup. To serve others, you must also do things that refill your cup. As always, input equals output. Seven, you are what you spend your time doing. So when you don't know what to do, remember who you are. And if you lose sight of who you are, focus on what you can do to find yourself again. Eight, separate the process of creating from improving. While you invent, don't select. While you sketch, don't inspect. When you write your first draft, don't reflect. Your internal editor is what blocks your creator. Number nine, it's a hell yeah or it's a no. Your time is precious, so say no to things that are mid so that you have time and energy to do the S tier things when they come up. And finally, number 10, don't rush. You don't need to worry about where you will end up. If you focus on enjoying where you are and always take the next step that is right for you, then you will end up where you are meant to be. 
As I said at the beginning of this list, most of my life experience thus far, I have been a student. So take from these lessons what is helpful and forget the rest, because I too am still learning. Whatever your next step is, please do not let your learning end here. Embra em sorry. Embrace the challenges that lie ahead and let them be the catalyst for your growth. On behalf of Alumni UBC, I am honored to welcome you into the alumni family. You now belong to a community of change makers and leaders that is almost 400,000 strong. Graduates like you and I, who are looking to make a positive difference in the world. Visit the Alumni Welcome Tent after our ceremony and see what it means to be a new member of the alumni family. Together, let us continue to inspire, innovate, and be the change that we want to see in the world. Congratulations, class of 2023, and good luck. Thank you. Thank you, Erica. I will now ask Dr. Rehan Sadiq, Provost and Vice President Academic, to introduce the award for Teaching Excellence and Innovation. Good afternoon. I'm pleased to introduce the award for Teaching Excellence and Innovation. This award, including a $2,000 prize, recognizes and outstanding teachers at the Okanagan campus, as nominated by students, faculty colleagues, and alumni. This award highlights the importance of teaching in creating an outstanding student experience. It is my privilege to introduce two of this year's recipient who are both in this ceremony. I will begin with Dr. Claire Jan from the School of Engineering I invite Dr. Jan to come forward, and I will read a short citation and present a certificate recognizing her accomplishments. <laughs> Dr. Jan is known for her passion for teaching, her dedication to curriculum development, and her innovative and inspiring educational initiatives. Students and colleagues alike recognize Dr. Jan for her significant and continuous efforts to offer an exceptional learning environment through student-centered and reflective teaching practices. The foundation of Dr. Jan's teaching and learning philosophy is the well-being of her students. Her pedagogical approach embraces inclusive teaching, ensuring all students have an opportunity to succeed. She inspires students' curiosity in learning, encourages independent and critical thinking, and empower students to achieve excellence. Dr. Jan has demonstrated remarkable educational leadership that has fostered and supported important curriculum changes within the School of Engineering, including meaningful work with the community. Dr. Jan consistently seeks out feedback and opportunities to bolster her teaching efforts and, as a result, improve the experience of her students. The profound impacts of Dr. Jan's work extend for beyond our campus and have undoubtedly sparked a passion for learning in both, in both current students and next generation of students. Congratulations, Dr. Jan. And next, I would like to introduce Dr. Payman Yusfi from the School of Engineering. I invite Dr. Yusfi to come forward and will read a short citation and present a certificate recognizing his accomplishment. Dr. Yusfi is a passionate and engaging teacher and a champion of educational innovation. Known for his exceptional leadership in the School of Engineering in the area of technology, he has been at the forefront of embracing technology and developing innovative approaches to connect his students with the curriculum. Dr. Yusufi's passion for exploring teaching technologies not only demonstrates that innovation is central to his pedagogy, but also contributes to supporting the growth and success of his students. Dr. Yusufi is very active in continuing education and personal development. He is recognized for having a strong desire to improve on his already outstanding pedagogy and his willingness to share learnings and insight with the teaching community. 
The selection committee was inspired by Dr. Yusufi's thoughtful and collaborative teaching approach that welcomes students' feedback, engages them as a partners in their education, and demonstrates the, his commitment to student success and well-being. The impacts of Dr. Yusufi's work will continue to be felt deeply on the UPC of Nagan campus and beyond for many years to come. Congratulations, Dr. Yusufi. The Governor General's Academic Medal was first awarded in 1873 by the Earl of Dufferin and has since become one of the most prestigious awards that a student in a Canadian educational institution may receive. Today, we present the Governor General's Silver Medal to the student who achieved the most outstanding academic record in a bachelor's degree program. This year, the Silver Medal goes to Saul Thiessen. What's the <laughs> Saul is a gifted student who completed one quarter of his courses with a final mark of 100%. He recently completed his Bachelor of Applied Science and with a keen interest in computer engineering, minored in computer science. He sought to pair fundamental physical principles offered in the electrical engineering program with the programming and software perspective offered by the computer science minor. Saul says his driving motivation is his competitive nature and a pursuit of excellence. Saul has been accepted to the Master of Computer Science program at ETH Zurich in Switzerland. <laughs> Following his studies in Zurich, he plans to pursue a PhD in artificial intelligence. In the meantime, he's um, tinkering on a few software projects. Please join me in congratulating Saul Thiessen on receiving the Governor General's Silver Medal. So, it's the big show. Uh, will the candidates for the degrees please rise as you are able? Mr. Chancellor, I have the pleasure of presenting the candidates for degrees who have successfully completed their studies and fulfilled the conditions that the university has set for them. The Okanagan Senate of this university recommends them to you for the degrees that will be announced by the representative of the faculties. As each degree is officially conferred, the dean or representative of the faculty, and in the case of graduate students, the dean of the College of Graduate Studies, will congratulate the student. As each student passes the university mace, the symbol of authority of the chancellor who confers their degree, Jenica Frisk and Colin Pritchard, members of alum alumni UBC, will present each student with an alumni handbook. And I do have to report to this August group that this, this week will be 60 years since Colin Pritchard walked across the stage himself. Congratulations, Colin. Please be seated. So we're now getting ready for the really important part, but before we do, I need to share a few instructions with all of you, so do pay attention. Graduates will follow the instructions of the marshals to leave their seats and line up to, to graduate. You'll have three opportunities to have your photo taken. One on the floor before you walk up the ramp to the stage, one when you come on the stage and are standing over here on my right as your name is being read out, and another photo when you cross to meet the president. 
you'll notice that we've placed footprints on the stage for the photo opportunities to indicate where you should stand. So make sure you put your feet where the feet are on these, on these uh, places. Also, make sure that you have your folder with you that you were provided in the lineup. What, but, and here's the, probably the most important thing. You'll notice that the cover of the folder has a coat of arms. Please make sure that you have it the right way up. That you will regret it for many years if you have pictures with it upside down. So that's my tip. Uh, for those of you who are graduating with your PhD today and you wish to be hooded on stage, and I see we have a, a large number of PhD candidates, please hand your hood to the president, then face the audience, remove your hat, and if you're tall, you might want to bend your knees a little so that the president can get the hood over your, or your head. Okay, that all made sense? Everybody ready? Let's get started. Mr. Chancellor, I have the pleasure of presenting to you the candidates for the, for the uh, Doctor of Philosophy. Hamid Daghai. Dr. Daghai developed a fast automated methodology that extracts the discontinuity planes orientations from a 3D model of rock structures built using remote sensing techniques. The methodology yields accurate results with less bias and replaces labor-intensive manual measurements. This research helps to better identify the discontinuity planes and their orientation and improves rock stabilization design and safety. Dr. Daghai. <laughs> Mohammad Hegazi. Dr. Hegazi studied fuel cell battery hybrid propulsion for zero emissions freight switching locomotives. His work optimized propulsion component sizing and prototyped Canada's first hydrogen powered railway vehicle. Dr. Hegazi. <laughs> Sadia Isak. Dr. Isak developed a, in, an integrated decision-making framework that can evaluate, lo, evaluate low impact developments by considering their public health risks, environmental performance, and economic cost. The results of her result are valuable in promoting both human well-being and sustainable development during project planning, thereby contributing to the achievement of the United Nations 2030 Agenda. Dr. Isak. <laughs> Manjit Kaur. Dr. Kaur developed a decision support system to identify, predict, and improve the performance of buried water infrastructure under un urban dis desertification. The developed system consists of various methods and approaches to assess, manage, and improve the performance of buried water infrastructure. This, this study will help municipalities in mitigating the impacts of dens densification of sustainable development. Dr. Kaur. Edel Ronaldo Martinez Concepcion. Dr. Martinez developed advanced numerical mo models for buried oil and gas pipelines for stress corrosion cracking in contact with a near neutral pH environment. His solution provided holistic framework to understand the initiation and propagation of corrosion induced cracking that will help decision makers to manage aging pipes. Dr. Martinez. Resti Nabatarega. Dr. Nabatarega optimized volatile fatty acids production from municipal sludge. Volatile fatty acids are the precursor for methane production. A renewable energy source results from this study have a substantial practical impact and can be used by engineers and municipalities to increase energy supply to regulate the increasing global fossil fuel prices. Dr. Nabatarega. Serene Raj Pokrel. 
Dr. Procrell, Dr. Procrell de developed an integrated urban water management framework for British Columbia municipalities to evaluate the benchmark their water system performance using a one water approach index. He built a model of a one water community that will help urban water managers in enhancing their water management strategies and advise policymakers in establishing integrated water policies. Dr. Pokrell. <laughs> Haley Olde Selassie. Dr. Olde Selassie developed a Bayesian belief network and geographic information system, integrated decision support framework for external corrosion risk assessment of oil and gas transmission pipelines. The proposed framework will aid decision makers in managing especially distributed aging pipelines. Dr. Olde Selassie. <laughs> Hira Zafar. Dr. Zafar critically analyzed the operational factors and response metrics in a food waste fed microbial fuel cell. Her work focused on sustainable management of food waste with simultaneous renewable energy generation while exploring different configurations of microbial fuel cells. The findings recommended practical solutions for application of microbial fuel cells on a large scale. Dr. Jafar. Payman Amiri. Dr. Amiri developed novel techniques to overcome the control challenges in high performance electric vehicle battery charging systems. The proposed methods facilitated the widespread adoption of electric vehicles through the use of high efficiency and high power battery charges while get nations around the world a step closer to sustainable growth. Dr. Amiri. Zila Bahrami. Dr. Bahrami provided automated solutions for terminals to inspect the safety and security of shipping containers. The proposed solutions are based on artificial intelligence that benefit the global transportation industry and will, will assist in the standardization and reinforcement of container management and logistics at terminals. Dr. Bahrami. Levi Michael Bieber. Dr. Bieber des designed a new class of high voltage direct current power converters with lower implementation costs than the previous technologies. With their compact size, such converters will improve the capital cost of offshore renewable energy projects by enabling wind or solar power system to more effectively be integrated into the electric grid. Dr. Bieber. Zintao Han. Dr. Han focused on developing efficient and accurate simulation methods for next generation high voltage direct current converters, which are critical for the reliable and efficient operation of power grids. His research has significant intellectual and practical value as it helps researchers and engineers better understand the performance of advanced multi-level converters and design more efficient and reliable power systems. Dr. Han. Mazid Morazadeh. Dr. Morazadeh proposed comprehensive and com computationally feasible frameworks to accommodate the adoption of plug-in electric vehicles using energy storage systems integrated with renewable generation and demand sites management programs. Dr. Morazadeh. <laughs> Rakiba Raihana. Dr. Raihana focused on video data analysis to automate, automate water pipelines inspections. She developed deep learning based automated frameworks to detect pipe defects and butterfly valves in real, li real time. Her research outcomes contribute to the improved condition assessment of water pipelines and facilitate strategic water pipeline replacement plans. Dr. Raihana. Ran Zhang. Dr. Zhang designed high performance deep learning based algorithms for shipping container code detection and recognition. The research outcomes significantly advanced the automated shipping container code recognition 
system. Dr. Zhang. Ayushman De. Dr. De evaluated the thermal management of high frequency management components in power electric systems. The proposed low cost thermal modeling approaches help significantly reduce the computational cost of electronic component thermal models, allowing for the rapid estimation of electronic component thermal performance for varying boundary conditions. Dr. De. <clears throat> Sina Kian Far. Dr. Kian Far developed a fundamental understanding of residual stress evaluation in aluminum powertrain components. Employing innovative finite element method modeling and comprehensive experimental tests, he explored microstructure, thermomechanical property, and residual stresses. His findings contribute to optimizing next generation internal combustion engines in the automotive industry enabling sustainable and high-efficiency product. Dr. Kian Far. <laughs> Debasmita Mukherjee. Dr. Mukherjee established a comprehensive taxonomy of intelligence levels of, for human-robot collaboration. Based on a thorough review of the impact of natural and efficient communication to team frequency, uh, fluency, she proposed a novel multimodal human communication inspired framework that allows robot to adapt to human behavior for reliable human robot communication in industrial settings. Dr. Mukherjee. <laughs> Tina Olfak Baksh. Dr. Olfat Baksh established a novel artificial intelligence-based model to connect the geomaterial features of composite fabrics to their material properties directly based on their microstructure images and without extensive experimental trials. Her model was found to be highly accurate and can be used for advanced composite property predictions in manufacturing industry. Dr. Olfat Baksh. Mahmoud Sakar. Dr. Sakar studied novel nanocomposite bio inks for bioprinting applications. His work succeeded in developing clay based and electrically conductive bio ink that have potential for bone and neutral tissue engineering application. Dr. Sakar. <laughs> Syed Bahram Taleb Zadi. Dr. Taleb Zadi. Dr. Taleb Zadi developed an acoustic-based lab on a cheap device for the separation and isolation of exosomes. These vesicles play a critical role in intercellular communication and the transfer of biomolecules between cells. The newly developed acoustic sonorator was capable of precise manipulation and separation of nanoscale particles and exosomes. Dr. Taleb Zadi. Saheb Zerati Dizeh. Dr. Zerati studied the mutual interaction of turbulence and heat transfer in force and natural convention through high fidelity numerical analysis of the fluid flows in solar, solar chimneys and texture pipes. Through his analysis, valuable instructions, guidelines, and numerical tools were presented to design more efficient thermal system. Dr. Z there's, there's, a, there's IT. <laughs> Yu Zhang. Dr. Zhang pushed the boundary of next generation battery technology. Using recycled materials, she developed a safer, cleaner, and more powerful battery for electric vehicles. This novel battery technology will extend electrical vehicle range, accelerate transportation, electrification, and promote circular economy development in Canada. Dr. Zhang. Mr. Chancellor, I have the pleasure of presenting to you the candidates for the degree Master of Applied Science. Ahmed Al Sagaf. Atefa Al-Sharifi Zaghi. <laughs> F 
Fayeza Kadabshi. Maria Claudia Rincon Remolina. Chamod Wijay Ya Sekara. Ziad Abdul Samad. Mayar Danash Paju. Rafia Hossein. Mohammed Karouf. Mariam Moradpour. Nayusha Moshrifi. Ogachuku Onyan Nenyu. Devin Reinholtz. Nasim Baramian. Brett Aaron Costco. Ruby Dollywall. Man in Lam. Olivia Helena Margoto. Jesse Morales. Amir Nazemi. Leslie Saka. Mantham Shah. Mr. Chancellor, I have the pleasure of presenting to you the candidates for the degree Master of Engineering. Nabil Ahmad. Mohammad Riza Alaji Bandian. Tabitha Lydia Hart Arthur. Sarath Babarajan. Hugh Ming Fang. Cameron Gayami. Mohammed Hossein Jamshidi. Antara Karad. Sepeda Kazemi Naya. Mosen Kodada D. Arasili Laranjera Fazio. Chan Fang Liang. Sujan Mohapatra. Fatima Partovi. Ku 
Poojan Jitendra Kumar Shah. Harpunit Singh. Kazi Anika Tassin. Shayor Taravdar. Rachel Janiel Calvin. Malik Duala. Prasanth Alaverthi. Pooja Heyre Gowder. Arham Hussein. Rakabal Islam. Arunava Majumdar. Mohammed Asala Mustafa. Syed Amir Nadim. Darshni Thangapush Paraja. Wei Jia Yao. Yu Sin Ziang. Ahmad Abdul Manan. Noble Abraham Varghese. Vinayak Anil. Meet Maheshbai Chanchapra. Pargi Chahan. Manish Chetayar. Krishna Sambhav Kaladani. Parath Mayor May Surya. Parth Ravinder Kumar Patel. Rutwick Patel. Loheth Raj Parumahanti. Lucky Parashwani. Tejas Rava Varapu. Don Sanga Palarachi. Abhina Vipan Sikarwar. Sahib Jat Singh. Amir Sorbral Montero da Silva. Aman Sodera. Kwak Te Kwak Wei Tang.
Karthikian Thiruvalangadu Eswaran. Yi Wu. Ajinkya Deepuk Zalta. Mr. Chancellor, I have the pleasure of presenting to you the candidates for the degree Bachelor of Applied Science. Rafia Abo Alfati. Adnan Makdum Ahmed. Farooq Al Rawi. Benjamin Alder. Dwight Bitts. Graham Sam Allen Brown. <laughs> Pen Yu Tsao. <laughs> Fred Mark Bayet Karanguyan. <laughs> Eric Kuzman. Joel Thomas Cormier. Jonah Patrick Denby. Lorenzo Devinar Pirico. Kendall Peter Dirksen. Braden Gray. Taylor Haints. Stephen Hallas. Dorna Hatani. Robin Hakalak. <laughs> Bryony Humphreys. <laughs> Essen Javed. <laughs> Alicia Kor Candola. Navsift Kaur. <laughs> Stephen Kin Sing Liang. <laughs> Kyle Richard James Lovett. <laughs> Parmvir Manan. Zachary McKenzie. Cassidy Morrell. Taylor Musgrave. Kahe Roy Ng. Trevor Yaroslav Nikodim. Nathan Noble. Carter Proudfoot. Parker Reed.
Amar Riyad. Alias Rodriguez Sanchez. James P. Rollins. Giovanni Sambrielis. Yon William Stewart Snydel. Shyla Stahl. Lindsay Staples. Jessica Stern. Caroline Tai. Samuel Gay Thiak. Carly Jade Tremblay. Sirhan Turkmenafsar. Weston Galloway Vanderveen. Eric Vieira. Casper Yu. Mustafa Zakrit. <laughs> Melissa Zander. <laughs> Sierra Zandvliet. Haytham Zhang. <laughs> Johannes Eric Prawira Laxmona. <laughs> Samira Zafrin. <laughs> Taylor Lee Boucher. Yu Sun. Cassidy Jackson. Edison Lee Shang. Abdullah Omar Abusamak. Larkin Connell Casey. Junbam An. Abdallah Alsa Walhi. Kyle Barnes. Caden Black. Ty Jordan Bore. Abarinder Singh Brar. Eugene Chan. (laughs) 
Lawrence William Crooks. Sam Christoph Diab. Selkirk Munying Engman. Chia Susian Fan. Syed Faraz. Edwin Fermansaya. James Fowler. Eli Garlic. Jordan Gillard. Syra Gorgani. <laughs> Douglas Gray. <laughs> Liam Hasdyke. Matthias Jenny. <laughs> Satvir Joal. <laughs> Caleb Kavaloff. <laughs> Tan Ishk Kumar. Consta Kyrianen. <laughs> Justin Laverdier. <laughs> Shalene Lee. <laughs> Jacob Everett Lloyd. Michael McLean. Andrew James McLean. Marmik Modi. Erhan Nye. Adamir Alejandro Nieto Chong. Paul Vladimir Nieto Chong. Erica Pinillo. Mateo Antonio Plaxton. Levi Price. Ashw Ashwin Ramesh. Sathvik Radhakrishnan. Dominic A.J. Singh Ray. Ruben Cora Roy. Leonardo Wernick. Michael Sampi.
Samuel Michael Tiemann. Brandon White. Angus Wiggle. Timothy Williams. Sean Sanderson Worthington. Yuan Zing Zhang. Pavni Agarwal. Kieran Doncy Elmer. Zikora Somairo Dozi. Joel Christopher Johnson. Youssef Hussein Kamal Hussein Mahmoud. Ashish Mascari. Andrew Alexander McDonald. Wilfred Meyer. Mehal Rising. Ramal Subang. Ahmed Shariryar. Arshan Gill. Haley Goguen. Togledor Alzadelger. Wakar Ahmed. Ethan Scott Gibbard. Daryl Hua. James Kive. Graham Damberger. Mr. Chancellor, I have the pleasure of presenting to you the University of British Columbia Medal in Bachelor of Applied Science, head of the graduating class, Solomon Thiessen. Chuanyu <laughs> Yui Kensuke Woon. George Ung. Ahmed Abdo. Von Cedric Acosta. Shriya Agrawal. Ali Ahmed. (laughs) 
Ibrahim Osalama Al Hassan. Mohammed Amr. Jashin Kaur Bachal. Kritik A. Baharani. Jeremy Patrick Bennett. Benjamin Bieberdorf. Thomas Stanley Bland. Mike Chang. Evan Charity. Johanna Cellini. <laughs> Methab Chima. <laughs> Ilho Cho. <laughs> Siddharth Chopra. Edward Cochran. Jordan Cox. Eric Sear. Kavner Singh Dhaliwal. Caden Dion. Claire Celeste Evans. One Far East Imarn Farul Arifin. Andrew Fall. Alexi Gatsky. <laughs> Tyler Gerales. <laughs> Ryan Gordon. <laughs> Daniel Greeno. Jack Thomas Greenshields. <laughs> Kubeb Hashmi. <laughs> Nathan Joseph Henderson. <laughs> Liam Huffman. Keenan Icaz. Braden James. Jazreet Kaler. Ali Karim. Karim Carter.
Andrew Killingsworth. Pearson Kung. Brandon John Richard Langer. Kifan Lee. Bradley Lorette. Sean Mason. Brent Jason Mueller. Eric Nenzen. Nehemiah Ohori. Benjamin Farid Orchard. <laughs> Emily Petru. <laughs> Ryan Proughton. <laughs> Everett Vincent Rubinick. Kurt Ruffini. <laughs> Becker Salkeld. <laughs> Vikramjeet Sandhu. Amarinder Singh Sidhu. Evan Robert Silner. Chung Wei Li. Dylan Simpson. Nyan Lynn Ma. <laughs> Muhammad Harith Iman Sakiban. <laughs> Dong Guan Shin. <laughs> Maher Skeek. Caleb J. Spencer. <laughs> Yui Shuan Su. <laughs> Lucas Suari. <laughs> Madison Marie Shapula. Vishesh Jung Thapa. Conrad Van Versveld. Jacob Van de Sand. Shreyanth Varghese. Chase Walsh. Oh. Timothy Webster.
Nicole White Robinson. Savan Sanjil Wikrama Singh. Adrian Whitmire. Hengjia Zhang. Yihao Ji. Logan Sweat. <laughs> Kao Ho Wang. <laughs> Salman Ahmad. Elias Xavier Jensen. <laughs> Riley Adam. <laughs> Sheikh Darius Ahmad. Parmeet Singh Bar. <laughs> Arthur Garbas. <laughs> Bosa Moketti. <laughs> Darren Wijaya. Yosef El Kashab, Audrey Cunningham, Molly Bell Richardson, Dawson Stephen James Zink. Leonardo Dutra Soares. <laughs> Venia Ahmad. <laughs> Ryan Doby. <laughs> Spencer Faubert. Dapo Martins. It ain't over yet. <laughs> almost, almost, yay. My name is Stephen Point. My traditional name is Kholikosol. It means Speaker of the House. And I'm honored to be the Chancellor of the University of British Columbia. It gives me great pleasure to be celebrating with you today and presiding over this ceremony. Will the graduates please rise as you are able? That's you. For those graduates who've just crossed the stage today, <clears throat> and for those who are unable to attend today's ceremony with respect to the appropriate degrees shown on the program, I as Chancellor hereby admit you to the Convocation 
of the University of British Columbia. Congratulations to each and every one of you. As Chancellor, it has been my great honor and privilege to join you today and to have admitted you to the Convocation of UBC. All of you have invested a great deal of determination, focus, and hard work to obtain your degrees. <laughs> You've had a lot of support along the way, however, from your family, friends, and peers. Many of them are here with us today in the hall to celebrate with you, and some have joined online to watch. I think this would be the perfect time to turn around and show them your appreciation. Let's give your families and friends a huge round of applause, all right? And let's not forget our teachers, the faculty members on stage today. Can we thank them as well? It's also my honor and privilege to welcome you as the newest members of Alumni UBC. You are now part of a global network of more than 385,000 UBC grads who live and work in 140 countries around the world. Your life's journey has brought you this far and I'm sure you have a great distance yet to travel. I wish to congratulate you on your amazing achievement and also acknowledge your hard work and sacrifices made during your time here at UBC and thank you for choosing our university. I wanna just pause for a moment to reflect on Dr. Pauline Tabaskett's comments made yesterday regarding our ancestors who have brought us here. And I also wanna comment on Vice Chancellor Cormick comment about becoming a global citizen. I have four grandfathers. One of them was named Hitluck. He was a war chief of the Wolf Clan, Sumath people in the Fraser Valley. My other grandfather was William Jameson, the Gun Clan, Northern Scotland. I have a plaid and a kilt to prove it. And I, know not, I now know what they wear underneath it, which I can't tell you. <laughs> Fernando da Silva came in the gold rush from Chile, another one of my grandfathers. John Palua came to build the highway from Yale to the interior for the gold rush as well from Hawaii. I'm wearing the Hawaiian beads as part of my heritage. One of my uncles, <clears throat> John, uh, one of my aunts married a gentleman right from China. And my uncle, Jerry Kong, fought in the Second World War, stationed in Germany. Another uncle, who I share with the, the chief of the Asuyus band, came from Italy. He was a Lorenzetto. I am a global citizen, <laughs> just all by myself. <laughs> but becoming a global citizen means much more than that. Recently, the news reported that some 471 species of animals, and birds, insects are disappearing in our global environment. Is it because of global warming? Is it because of overpopulations and overpollution? Is it because we're dumping plastics into the ocean? The answer, of course, is all of the above. Becoming a global citizen means much more than just your ancestry, and I encourage you all to do that work. 
but it's becoming aware that our brothers and sister circle includes all of the animals, all of the plants, all the fish that swim in the water, all the birds that fly up in the sky. They were here before we were. They had as much claim and right and sovereignty to the world as you and I do. Our responsibility is to ensure that future generations can enjoy those animals and birds as well. Ralston Saul wrote a book recently. It says that almost all Canadians can claim some ancestry to being indigenous. He had just been here that long. I think it's true. But more importantly, we share something in common as Canadians. We live on this beautiful country called Canada. Wherever you come from, you're here now. We're in this canoe together. Let's paddle together, okay? Let's sing our country song together with pride. I know the prime minister's made several apologies. Even the Pope has made some apologies. Let's not dwell on why these apologies were made, but the fact that Canada has chosen to do them. It's an honorable thing to do. Remember that we are all, we all create our future by that which we think, say, and do. That we live in a circle and we gain that which we give out. So don't forget to give back to someone who needs your help. For it's in this giving that we manifest true happiness for ourselves. Once again, class of 2023, congratulations. I would like to take this opportunity to thank our Chancellor, Stephen Point, for presiding over today's ceremony, and also our President, Deborah Buzzard, for joining us for this important celebration. Let's give them a round of applause. Before we close this, our last ceremony, after two days and six ceremonies, in which we will have graduated over 2,300 new alumni for the University of British Columbia. I'd like to acknowledge all those who contributed to the success of this graduation. You've seen some of them here wearing their volunteers and their martial uh, uh, badges and sashes. You haven't seen all of them because you haven't seen the lands people who made sure that our, our uh, campus looked completely beautiful, the people who set up this space, who have organized everything. It's been an, an army of volunteers. So I'd like to thank all the faculty and staff who volunteered and without them, we know this could not have happened. So please join me in thanking them all. And I will just say, you can see many of them listed on the back of the program. And so you, you can thank them more specifically as you look at that. Uh, graduates and guests, this does bring our ceremony to a close, although I have one more thing, so don't, don't, just, just stay with me. So thank you for joining me today. Graduates, I, I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I have, and that all of you will be able to join us following the ceremony. Your procession will take you to the central courtyard to reconnect with your guests and take photos. Uh, we invite you to stop at the alumni UBC tent for light refreshments with your family and friends and to activate your new alumni UBC app as you begin your journey to become part of our global alumni family. Guests are kindly requested to remain in their places until the academic processions have left the building. But as I say, there's one more thing, just one more thing. Before we begin the procession, we have one more big moment. So parents, family, friends, platform party, this is going to be a photo op, so get those cameras ready. This is the time-honored tra tradition known as the cap toss. 
You've been waiting for this, right? So here we go. So let's get this right. So the key to a successful cap toss is synchronization and altitude. And maybe a little attitude. So I'll leave the altitude and the attitude to you, but to ensure we're all in sync, I'm gonna lead you with a prompt. So first, will the graduates please rise as you're able to prepare for the toss. Please remove your caps and hold them in your hands. Don't throw them yet. In a moment, I'm gonna wish you one final congratulations on behalf of the University of British Columbia. When I say the word Columbia, that's your cue to toss your caps high in the air. And parents, and all, at all, that's your cue to start snapping photos. Okay, we, we ready to roll? Okay, here we go. Mr. Chancellor, President Buzzard, dignitaries, family and friends, please join me in congratulating once again the 2023 graduates of the University of British Columbia. Thank you.